Welcome back to Unit 4 of our course about semantic notation. In the units before, you have learned that there is already a concept for semantic notation and uh, you have learned how we can apply this concept in order to produce a corporate manual, very similar to a corporate design manual, a manual for this notation. We call it a notation manual. Rolf Hichert has explained to you what's the content of such a, a notation manual and he has explained that there is some basic layout rules, some semantic notation rules and uh, you can use it, this manual, if you want to build reports or you learn from it if you want to understand reports following this notation. In this unit we will apply this semantic notation or this notation manual uh, to specific chart types and table types, of course. Um, so we start from, from charts, let's say a column chart, how it looks today, and then we try to change the layout in order to be compliant with the rule set um, that we've introduced in the units before. Let's start with column charts. If we look at a typical column chart, for instance this one here, it's just a column chart from here, it's um, from, from SAP in 2006, um, but that doesn't matter. It's just a layout how a designer decided that this chart should look like. If we would do it compliant to the rules set forth in the uh, units before, we would probably have a layout like this. You see in the upper left corner, um, you see this title um, that we want to have on every chart and on every table, a three-row title with a unit, with a measure and with the time frame. And you see that we have uh, an, an axis from left to right. On that axis we have the semantic notation for actual and previous year and we have some highlighting for the, um, uh, the increase that we have. Um, we have a positive increase from 2000 and um, what's it, 2014 to 2015. Well, we could probably add some more information um, by not only um, showing the sales by business line, but also showing the sales by industry or by region. And then we add a message and we highlight the message in the chart. So at the end, we have a chart template for columns that looks like this and could be used for many different purposes. Let's look at the next chart type. If we talk about waterfalls, waterfalls are a very powerful instrument in order to visualize uh, business facts and uh, let's just create a typical template for waterfall charts. We start with the columns. Again, you see columns for actual data in black or in dark gray. You see columns for forecast data hatched. And now we add plan and previous year. We calculate the variance to plan and previous year and highlight it. Standardized, of course. And on a next tier or on a next layer, we add the variances. Here we add percentage variances, uh, like You've seen from Wolf Hichert in the last unit, we do show relative variances as pins. Now let's look at bar charts. Again, just let's take a bar chart from whatever source. Here it is um, an analyst bar chart and uh, the question is, why is it this green-like greenish uh, color of these bars and why does it look like this? Look, again, it's the designer who decided that it should look like that. If we would apply our semantic notation to such a chart, it would probably look like this. Again, we have a clear title, we have a message, we have a complete similar looking or look and feel of this bar chart. Let's continue with a waterfall 
um, which is arranged vertically. It's not the horizontal waterfall we had before, but it's a vertical waterfall. Uh, so you already know if it's vertical, it's a waterfall on structures and not a time series waterfall. So if we want to visualize, let's say, the, the sales for a chocolate company by regions in Europe, we could do it in the Excel style. This is an or original Excel chart. If we would do it in the, the semantic style we suggest, in the IBCS style, it would like, look like this. So we first have a bar chart with the countries of Europe. We have a clear title on top of that. And then, again, we add uh, the, the, the annual totals for actual and, and for plan and for previous year. Then we calculate the variance, first on an annual level. And then we add the, the variances. Um, first we add the previous year in the bar chart. And then we add the variances on a regional level. So we now see which countries have contributed to the total variance of the year um, and uh, so the, the good ones and the bad ones, again the good ones green and the bad ones in red. In addition, we could have um, a variance chart next to it and probably the percentage variance on top. Let's continue. We continue with what we call a calculation waterfall. You probably know that you start in, in a calculation scheme with a, a specific measure and you calculate from this measure another measure, like SAP did it in this 2016 chart from the, the annual report. It's a horizontal axis. If we do it in the IPCS style, you know horizontal axes are reserved for time series. So we cannot do it in a horizontal way. We have to, to use a vertical axis. So let's change the axis and use a vertical one. And again, the question, why is it yellow? Well, I know it's probably the, the corporate color of SAP. Uh, but in IBCS style, we would probably use this way. We have it in, in gray shades and we have the complete calculation scheme. We have the same title on top, a three-line title, and now we can add additional information. Another year, we calculate the variance from those two years, and again we can calculate the percentage variance. Okay, we add a title and we highlight the title in the chart. Now let's, we, we come to a different chart type. If we want to explain the causes of a specific development. For instance, we have a calculated measure and we want to know from, from what part of that calculated measure the development stems. Then we can do it like this. We first start with, let's say, the return on assets in a time series, completely IPCS compliant, with a title and no message yet. Then we add the next level of calculation that we say, okay, the return on asset is calculated from. And probably we have a third level of calculation and we can completely analyze the root causes of a, of a specific development by using this ratio tree. We have a complete title, three rows. If we add a message on top, it's the same. It looks like like the same family of reports, the same family of charts, but now in the form of a tree chart. Or if we look at small multiples. Small multiples are used if you want to see um, a couple of units uh, at the same time. So all products, let's say 25 products or, or 16 regions at the same time. Here we have an example with regions. One region with one chart. Here um, uh, a column chart for Cologne. But we could add more regions. Here it's 20, no, 16 regions, 4 by 4, 16 regions with 
their specific time series in column charts. Again with the title and again now added with a message on top and this message highlighted in the lower left uh, low, in the lower right corner. Now the next one it's not only about bars and columns we are talking about line charts as well. For instance we could start with a bar chart here about the cash flow, cash in and cash out in, in a column chart and we calculate the cash as a stock measure on top of that and we visualize it with a line chart. Again with a title, again with a message and probably on top with the net cash flow in a next layer on top of the first chart. Or if we look at portfolio charts, you probably know those bubble charts with two axes or with, with um, two measures that are shown simultaneously. Again, we have a title, we have this typical um, 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 chart with two axes, this portfolio setup, we add some bubbles and a legend and we add a message. Looks very similar. And last but not least, the tables. Again, we have the title concept. Again, we have a clear concept for the rows and for the columns of a table. It's not arbitrary how high the columns and how, width, uh, how high the, the, the rows and how wide the columns are. It's everything defined in our corporate notation manual. So here, we have first the setup of the rows and then we have columns for previous year, actual and forecast, of course with the semantic notation. Then we add some calculated deviations and we probably want to show that with integrated bar charts. What I wanted to show you is with all those examples, with all those templates, we have a kind of family of charts and table, tables very similar looking. So we start to, to create a kind of pattern recognition. So if you look at, at the, the column chart, if you look at this line chart, if you look at this tree chart, if you look at this table, all has the same look and feel. What helps to understand it and what helps to create it. Okay. We are at the end of this unit and the question is if we do all of that. So we have a concept first, we have then a, a, a notation manual, a corporate notation manual and we have some templates that we use for building our, our charts and our tables. Is it really worth the effort? Here we have a visual language and the question is, is this visual language desirable? And in the next unit, we will be talking about the benefits of such a visual language. Hope to see you there again.